Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to the problem entitled friend or girlfriend from the Code Chef April 2019 long challenge. The problem states Schlock and Sashin are good friends. Schlock wants to test Sashin, so he wrote down a string S with length N and one character X. He wants Sashin to find the number of different substrings of S which contain the character X at least once. Sashin is busy with his girlfriend, so he needs you to find the answer. Two substrings of S are considered different if their positions in S are different. And the constraints for this problem are that we're going to have T test cases between 1 and 1,000, and the length of our string S is going to be between 1 and 10 to the 6th. S contains only lowercase English letters, X is a lowercase English letter, and the sum of N over all the test cases does not exceed 10 to the 6. Uh, so due to the fact that we have uh, N characters in our string S up to 10 to the 6, we know that we're going to need to do better than quadratic, so we can't just generate all of the substrings and check if it contains X, because this will definitely time out. Uh, but before we get to the solution, let's take a look at the examples that CodeChef provided us with. So we're given uh, two test cases uh, indicated by the first number here, and our first test case has uh, n equal to 3, so our string s has three uh, characters in it, and that is indicated here, abb, and the character uh, that we are looking to find substrings containing is b. And uh, we're given an explanation for this problem, uh, which gives us the output 5. So the answer for this test case is 5. And the explanation is that uh, the string ABB has six substrings in total, ABB, ABBB, and ABB. And only five of those contain the character B. So obviously the single uh, A, which is a substring, uh, doesn't contain a B. So uh, it won't count as a valid substring, but all the other ones do. So we end up with 6 minus 1 equals 5. And for the second case, they don't give us uh, an explanation, but I can walk you through it quickly. So we have 6, n equal to 6, meaning that our string s has 6 characters, and a valid substring that we're looking for is one that contains the character c. So if we generate all of the different substrings that we can get from our string s, we end up with 21. And if we highlight all the ones that contain c, we end up with the following. So two in the first column, six in the second column, and seven in the third column, which gives a grand total of 15. Uh, so at this point, if you want, pause the video, think about how to solve this, or maybe uh, you've already tried in the contest. And at this point, I'm going to talk about uh, the solution. So there's one key formula that you need to know, um, and that is the formula for calculating uh, the sum of an arithmetic sequence that increments by one and starts at one. Uh, so this is n times n plus 1 divided by 2. Um, I've covered this formula in several videos beforehand, but basically this gives us the number of substrings that you can get um, from our initial substring s. So uh, s we're given has a length of 6, and so if we plug 6 into this formula, we get 6 times 7 divided by 2, which is 42 divided by 2, which is 21, which you can see here we have three columns of seven substrings each and that gives us uh, 20 on substrings. So basically the way you can think about this is that there is going to be six substrings with length one, five with length two, four with length three, so on and so forth. And so you end up with basically one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six. And uh, the shortcut to calculating that total number is n times n plus one divided by two. So that gets us the total number of substrings. And from there, we then want to figure out how can we sort of get rid of the ones that don't uh, contain the character that we're looking for. So if we zoom in on our second example, uh, here is our string, here's the character C and uh, the substrings that I detailed previously. And if we take a look at the substrings within our string S that don't contain the character C, we end up with the following. So we have two substrings of uh, length 2, AB twice. And what we'll note here is that if we generate all the possible substrings from these substrings uh, that we're starting with here, so we can get an A, a B, and an AB, and we can get that twice for each of the different ones, uh, we get the total number of substrings that don't contain our character that we're looking for. So AB, AB, and then AB, AB. Uh, so basically what we want to do is find the length of all of the substrings in our string s that don't contain the character that we're looking for, plug each of the lengths of those substrings into our formula here, and just subtract that from the total number of substrings that you get if we didn't care about characters whatsoever. So 
we initially plug n into our formula and then we figure out all the different substrings, the length of those substrings that don't contain the character, and subtract that from our value that we just calculated. So we end up with a formula like this. I know it looks a little bit complicated, but when we walk through it, uh, it's actually pretty straightforward. And, and this is just a mathematical notation for the summation of all the different substrings uh, i that don't contain the character c, and we're taking the length of those substrings uh, and just plugging them into this formula here. So if we take a look at a slightly different example, um, we just add z's or z's uh, onto our substrings that don't contain the c, and there's one c in the middle, we can walk through that formula and see what we get. So n in this case is equal to 7, so we're going to plug that in and get 7 times 8 divided by 2 on the left here. And then we have two substrings, both of length 3, so we're going to plug in 3 uh, to this formula here twice, so we end up with this, 3 times 4 divided by 2 plus 3 plus times 4 divided by 2. And when we work this out, we end up with 56 divided by 2 is 28. And then basically, because we're doing this twice, we just get 3 times 4 is 12. And our final answer will be 16. So then really the only thing we have to do when it gets to coding this up and solving this is finding a way to basically effect, uh, efficiently um, get our substrings that don't contain the character C in them. And uh, both in Python and in our Haskell solutions, there's a very nice way of doing this. So in Python, we can just call our split function on a string and pass it the character that we're looking for. And in Haskell, we can make a call, <clears throat> a call to a function called chop. And uh, once we've done this, we basically just map the length of these substrings, so 3, 3, and then we can just plug these values into the second part of our equation, and we have n to start with. Um, so that's all there is to this problem, uh, and now we'll take a look at our code. So here is our Python solution, it's actually quite short, so we'll take a look at our sum n function, and this is just a function calculating the n times n plus 1 divided by 2. Here we're doing integer division to make sure that we get back an integer, and then we come to our main function solve that takes n, which is the length of our string, s, s which is our string, and c which is the character that we're looking for, and this is going to return an integer. And uh, to start, we calculate the first half of our equation, which is the total number of substrings that we can get out of s, so we just plug n into our sum n formula. And then we get the second part of our equation by using a generator expression. So the first thing we're doing is we're splitting uh, s by our character c. And then for each of the uh, strings that we get from this splitted string, we want to take the length of that string and then plug that length into our sum n function and then sum all of the values calculated from that sort of mapping from length to sum n and at that point we will have all of the possible substrings that don't uh, contain our character c and so once we have this we just have to return total minus missing so pretty straightforward Taking a look at our C++ solution, uh, here we have our sum n function. We have to make sure to take a long, long so we don't overflow. Uh, in Python, we don't really need to worry about that. And um, note here, once again, we're using the trailing return type because that is my preferred way to write functions in all languages now, if possible. Um, and then when we come to our solve function, we're taking the same parameters, uh, integer n, uh, string by const ref, and our character c. This is going to return a long, long as well. And we don't have a nice way to split our string in this case. Uh, so I did something a little bit more imperative compared to the functional way that we solved this in Python and that we're also going to solve it in our Haskell code. So we just store um, two temporaries, t, which is going to be the current length of our uh, strings. Um, which are not con or are substrings that are not containing our character C. So basically the number of characters that we visited so far without seeing uh, our character C, and then a running sum of the number of uh, substrings uh, that don't have that C missing. So for each character in our string S, basically if it's equal to C, we're going to plug uh, our current value of T into our sum N function and do a plus equals to missing, and then reset our temporary T back to zero because we've found the character that is going to be included in our string. Otherwise, we're just going to increment T. And this is going to have the same effect as what our Python code did. And uh, at the end of this loop, we have to make sure to do one final plus equals to missing, which is a bit irritating, uh, just because if the last character that we visited um, was not a uh, the character that we were looking for, we're going to miss out on that basically last substring um, 
that we need to subtract out. And so once we've done this, we just subtract that from the total possible number of sum strings, which we get by plugging n into our sum n function. And last but not least, taking a look at our Haskell solution. Uh, same idea, just slightly different implementation. So this is our sum n function here. It takes a single integer as a parameter and returns a single integer. So in our Haskell type signatures, the last uh, type here is always our return type. And we're simply uh, dividing n times n plus 1 by 2. So in Haskell, we don't have basically parentheses to um, order our arguments. We just evaluate them without the parentheses. And we have our solve function here, which is going to take a tuple of a string and a character and then return an integer. And uh, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to use pattern matching to get our string, which we're going to call x's, and then our character c. And then we're going to make a call to this chop function, which you can get from the utility hyphen ht library. And this chop function takes a predicate, uh, which using a section here equal to c is basically going to uh, do the exact same thing that split does in Python. So chop is the equivalent of split in Python. And basically what this means is that our string x's, we are going to chop it up into substrings whenever we have a character that equals C, the character passed in uh, to our tuple here. And then so once we have our sort of substringed uh, string, which is we're going to call Y's here, uh, we can plug this into our sort of main line in our function here. So the first part is just the total sum n with the parameter of the length of our, orig our original string x's. Uh, and then we subtract from that the missing part. So the way we do that is we have our list of substrings Y's here, and we want to map that to a list of lengths. Um, multiplied or composed with this sum n function. So basically this is a higher order function that composes and it's going to first read the length of each of our substrings in our list and then plug that into the sum n function here. And so then we're going to end up with a list of the lengths having been processed through this sum n function. And then we're going to sum that up to get our total missing amount. And uh, this will do the trick. So hopefully that made sense. Uh, the last thing to talk about is the time complexity, which for each of these solutions is going to be linear because the split or the chop or the sort of hand-rolled for loop uh, with temporaries is going to be a linear time complexity, seeing as we're only doing a single pass. And then whenever we use the sum end function for each of our solutions, that's a constant time operation. So at the end of the day, it's going to be linear. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.